Well then guys, welcome to our lesson on muscle fibre types. So to recap quickly skeletal muscle structure, um, so we can be clear about what it is we're talking about today when we're talking about muscle fibres. Um, you can see from the diagram uh, that a muscle is made up of bundles of smaller elements. So the muscle that is attached to the bone and the sheath that runs around it is known as the muscle belly. But within the muscle belly, we have bundles, um, bundles of fibres bundled together and a whole bunch of them within the muscle belly that are known as fascicles. And then within a fascicle, a fascicle is made up of a grouping or a bunch of fibres. And that's what we'll be talking about today. And then if we continue down um, towards the microscopic level, uh, if, we, if we were to open up a muscle fibre and look inside a muscle fibre, we'd see that it's made of myofibrils. And then within each myofibril, we have individual filaments. Um, those filaments then slide past one another. They run, these myofibrils, uh, of which the filaments are part, run the entire length of the muscle from one tendon all the way through to the other tendon. And when they, those filaments slide past one another, that is what causes the entirety of the muscle to contract. And you may have heard of something called sliding filament theory, which we're not going to go into today. Um, but it is uh, a theory that helps to explain how it is that the muscle overall contracts and brings the tendon at one end closer to the tendon at the other end and pulling on the various bones that they're attached to. But we're going to focus in on muscle fibres because muscle fibres can be one of three different types. Every single skeletal muscle in the body is made up um, of a combination or a mixture of these fibres. Some very, very small ones may be um, those that are perhaps controlling the eye or very, very small muscles for minuscule and minute movements uh, may not have all three. Um, but the vast majority, certainly of the skeletal muscles and certainly of the larger muscles um, that we think of when we uh, when we're talking about sporting movements, the quadriceps and the hamstrings and the gastrocnemius and the biceps and the triceps and so on, will be made up of a combination or a mixture of the three different types of muscle fibre. And we categorise them as follows. We have type 1 fibres and we have type 2 fibres. And then within type 2 fibres, we have two different sorts. So we call those type 2A fibres and type 2 X fibres. But the key distinction or the first distinction we need to know is between what makes something a type 1 fibre versus a type 2 fibre. Now a type 1 fibre is a fibre that is a slow twitch fibre. And a type 2 fibre, whether it's 2A or 2X, is what we call a fast twitch fibre. Most people have overall about a 50-50% split between type 1 fibres and type 2 fibres. Um, it may vary a little bit according to genetics and some people may have slightly more fast twitch fibres, some people might have slightly more slow twitch fibres and depending on that combination it may have an impact on what kinds of sports you're more predisposed to play um, or that you'd be better at if you, if you trained hard at least. So we've got type 1 fibres that are slow twitch and type 2 fibres that are fast twitch. What do those terms mean? Well, twitch speed simply means how quickly that muscle cell, that muscle fibre, contracts when it receives an impulse. So the impulse that comes from the central nervous system um, arrives at the muscle, um, and when that impulse arrives and a contraction is caused, um, when the muscle is innervated, a contraction is caused, if it contracts slowly, we call it a slow twitch fiber. And if it contracts more quickly, we call it a fast twitch fiber. Type one is slow twitch, type two is fast twitch. So let's just look briefly at the characteristics of each of the fiber types. So let's start with type one fibers. We've already said that they're slow twitch fibers. Um, and these fibers don't produce a great amount of force when they contract. They're very low force. Um, 
But the trade-off with them being low force is that they can actually contract for a very, very long time repeatedly because they're slow to fatigue. They don't get tired very quickly. So although they don't produce a great deal of force, they can keep going. Next, they, in terms of their recovery, they're slow to recover. That is, once a type 1 fibre is fatigued, it takes quite a long time for that, that fibre to be ready to go again. Where do type 1 fibres get their energy from? They're mostly from um, oxidative sources. So that is anything that can be broken down uh, with the use of oxygen to provide energy. So that's essentially um, carbohydrates and fats that are broken down in the presence of oxygen. So glycogen um, and, um, and fats can be broken down in the presence of oxygen. And it's that that drives type 1 fibres. So bearing that in mind, then, if these fibres require oxygen um, to produce energy, or the oxygen, uh, the energy that's produced, that's used in type 1 fibres, is derived from oxidative sources. What, does, what do you think that would mean about blood supply? Well, obviously, the blood is there to supply the oxygen. So the more blood supply we can have, the better these type 1 fibres would be. So, in fact, type 1 fibres uh, are very high in blood supply. There's lots of blood flowing, lots of capillaries and so on into type 1 fibres. Lots of good blood supply and also lots of myoglobin. Myoglobin is that stuff that stays in the muscle cell that's similar to haemoglobin, which floats around in the bloodstream, similar to haemoglobin in that it binds with oxygen and stores that oxygen uh, for a short while in the muscle. So we've got an increased blood supply, um, so lots of haemoglobin with lots of oxygen, and we've got more myoglobin, again, with lots of oxygen. We're just massively increasing the amount of oxygen available for these type 1 fibres. Because we've got that blood there, and because we've got that myoglobin there, that means the colour of these type 1 fibres tends to be uh, red. And lastly, uh, in, this, uh, the, in these categories here, um, is mitochondria. Mitochondria is, um, or they are the organelle, they are an organelle within the muscle cell that allows the cell to produce the energy um, that we've already mentioned. So having lots of mitochondria is really beneficial if you're going to be using lots of oxygen. So of course, in type 1 fibres, we have a very high concentration of mitochondria because they're able to use the oxygen uh, alongside the other fuel sources that we've mentioned to produce lots of energy. So when would we use these fiber types? Well, if you think about the characteristics of these fiber types, it becomes clear that these are ideal for any events that don't require a massive amount of force production, but do require you to keep on going. So any events that are long duration and relatively low intensity. So those would be things like the marathon, triathlon, steeplechase and so on. And as we've just mentioned, these type 1 fibres tend to be um, made most use of by the aerobic energy system. So these things link together, the energy systems link together with the fibre types here quite nicely. Um, because these type 1 fibres require oxidative um, sources of energy, then it is provided by the aerobic energy system. And you can go and watch the aerobic energy system video for a breakdown of how that all occurs. Let's look at the next type of fibre. Type 2A fibres. Now, as we've said already, the type 2A and the type 2X fibres are fast twitch fibres. That is, when the um, impulse arrives at the muscle fibre, they contract really quickly, much more quickly than type 1 fibres, which therefore means that the force production is quite high. So the amount of force that these fibres can produce when they contract is high because they contract very quickly. That's one of the reasons they contract very quickly. Um, in terms of fatigue and recovery, um, they're different to type 1 fibres in that type 1 fibres fatigue very slowly and take a long time to recover. Type 2A fibres fatigue uh, more quickly than type 1 fibres, but not as quickly as type 2X fibres. So we just call those medium level fatigue for the sake of, uh, uh, of ease here. Likewise with recovery. Uh, the amount of time a type 2A fibre takes to recover is faster than a 2X. So it's, it's slower than a 2X, but it's faster than a type 1. 
Um, so again, medium uh, recovery. Where does the energy come from for a 2A fibre? It comes both from oxidative and also from glycolytic sources. So that is from the aerobic system. 2A fibres can be used by the aerobic system um, and also the lactate system. Glycolytic, the breakdown of um, glucose without the presence of oxygen. So we can both use these 2A fibres can be used for sports that are aerobic and also anaerobic. The blood supply obviously has to be high if it's going to be used for aerobic activity. Myoglobin is high again and so the colour is red. And like the type 1 fibres, we also have high levels of mitochondria. So what sports are relevant here? Anything that's moderate duration. So not a very long time, um, but moderate duration, a, a, a medium length of time, but really high intensity stuff or quite high intensity stuff. So 400 metres, 100 metres sp uh, swim, sprint, kayak and things like that. And as you've seen, and as we've just mentioned, the type 2A fibres can be used uh, both as part of the aerobic system because they are oxidative and there is lots of blood supply, but also from um, if we increase the intensity and, and lactate starts to build up, we can also use the 2A fibres uh, in conjunction with the lactate energy system. Finally, type 2X fibres, fast twitch speed, as we've said, very high force production, but again, the trade-off with very high force production is that there's quick to fatigue, um, recovers really quickly, two or three minutes, and, and the type 2X fibres are ready to go again. Very, uh, very different to the type 1 fibres. The production of energy, because um, these require very, very rapid available energy, these tend to be both glycolytic uh, energy sources, so lactate system, and particularly the PC system, the ATP PC system. Um, in terms of blood supply, because these type 2X fibres are generally used in anaerobic conditions, there's no real great need for a massive blood supply, so the blood supply is low. Likewise, myoglobin, and therefore the colour of these type 2X fibres tends to be sort of white or the very pale pink colour. Um, and then again, in terms of mitochondria, because there's not a massive demand for oxidative energy production, there are very few mitochondria, which is where that all happens. So what kinds of sports and activities? Well, anything that's really short duration and very high intensity, powerlifting, 60 meter sprints and so on. And as we've just mentioned, the lactate system and the ATP PC systems are the systems that make best use of type 2X fibres. Finally then, let's draw all this together with this idea of Henneman's size principle. And this is a way of explaining how we create force in our muscles by recruiting those three different fibre types. Henneman's size principle says that when we have to lift a big weight, we will start off initially by recruiting our type 1 fibres. And if the type 1 fibres can lift the weight, great, we don't need to recruit any of the others. And if the type 1 fibres can do all the work, then we know that it's a low enough intensity that we can do it for ages. If the percentage of force that we need increases, the weight gets heavier, basically, and the type 1 fibres can no longer cope, um, we then have to recruit the next set of fibres and next to be recruited are the 2A fibres. Now if the type 1 fibres and the 2A fibres together can produce enough force to move that weight then we don't need to bother with the 2X fibres. But if again the weight is heavy enough then we can. We can recruit the type 1s then the type 2As then the type 2Xs until we've recruited the entirety of the muscle to make our maximum force production to move that really really heavy weight. What's the problem with this? Well, as you can imagine, if the, if the intensity or the demand is very low, we can do it with type 1 fibres. And that's great because they fatigue really slowly and we can do that activity for ages. But as the demand or the intensity gets higher, as that weight gets bigger, um, then we have to recruit 2A fibres and they get fatigued a bit more quickly. And if the weight gets even heavier still, then we've got to recruit the 2X fibres. And now we're in trouble because that can only sustain force production for a very short period of time. So either we have to stop or we have to reduce the weight back down to a level that we can shift it. Um, if our 2X fibres are fatigued, the weight will have to come back down 
to a type 1 or a type 2a if they're all fatigued we must bring the weight back down to a type 1 fiber or we must have a significant amount of rest time to allow those two type 2 fibers to recover so muscle fiber recruitment when we're lifting a weight or, or contracting our muscles happens in the order of type 1 first then type 2a and then if the intensity is really high then we get type 2x recruited to help out move that force hope that's been helpful. Thank you once again for watching.